you're awake. For Tilda, Abby, and Juan, having superpowers isn't all it's cracked up to be, especially when it ruins your social life. Hoping to be rid of their unusual abilities, this superhuman trio worked together to track down the mad scientist who experimented on them seven years before. They want to reclaim their lives, present and future. Tilda, Abby and Juan develop unique abilities seven years after being diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder as teenagers and undergoing an experimental treatment conducted by Dr. Alex Sarkov and Dr. Sidney Burke. Until recently, they were taking medications that kept their secret powers dormant, but now they've run out of pills, and their powers are emerging and upending their lives. Tilda, the lead singer of a punk band, develops a banshee-like shriek and hypersensitivity to sound, rendering her unable to perform. Abby, a studious undergrad, starts producing hyper-attractive pheromones, drawing unwanted attention and interfering with her plans to become a scientist. Juan, an art student with dreams of becoming a graphic novelist, begins transforming into a bloodthirsty beast, endangering everyone he cares about. Burke is willing to help them, but she needs cooperation from Sarkov, who's nowhere to be found. High school student Scott McCall gets bitten by a werewolf and has his whole life turned around. With his best friend Stiles Stilinski by his side they work through these changes and help save Beacon Hills from various different supernatural threats. Alone in the woods at night, Scott McCall is bitten by the Alpha and turns into a werewolf. He struggles to balance being a werewolf with his normal life and new love interest Alison Argent. A series of animal attack murders leads to the search for the Alpha Werewolf and the discovery that Allison's family has a dark and destructive history with the werewolves of Beacon Hills. Just a few days after the events that ended Season 1, a funeral brings the Argent family patriarch, Gerard, to Beacon Hills. Scott McCall and his friends are caught up in Gerard's apparent thirst for revenge against werewolves and a series of murders carried out by a new shape-shifting creature. Scott begins his junior year at Beacon Hills High School. He's spent a peaceful summer focused on being a better student and a better son. His calm is shattered by the arrival of the Alpha Pack and a new string of mysterious ritual killings. In the world of the Sandman, when human beings fall asleep, they're transported to a world of dreams and nightmares, Founded and governed by Let's a God, named Dream, one of the endless ones, his colleagues being Destiny, Death, Desire, Despair, Delirium, and Destruction. So Dream's back in Dreamland, but he's weak from his century of captivity, and his kingdom is in shambles. Worse, his tools are missing, and without them he's unable to repair a ceiling in his dilapidated library, let alone travel to Earth and hunt down the rogue dreams and nightmares that have escaped his realm. So Dream's goal is to find his tools. To do that, he decides to summon the Fates to help track them down. But in order to summon the Fates, he'll need enough power to conjure up a gift worthy of their service. And the only way to regain his power is by absorbing the magic from something he himself has created. Lucien somberly informs Dream that pretty much everything in this world is gone. Except one thing. In conclusion, Dream returns to his realm to continue his work creating a new set of dreams and nightmares. Lucien arrives to report that all is well in the kingdom, and is pleasantly surprised to learn that Morpheus has remade the nightmare Galt into a dream. For centuries, we've been fighting and keeping track of different things that move in and out of this world. The most dangerous ones, we find a way to contain. Hellstrom centers on Daimon and Anna Hellstrom, estranged siblings with vaguely described supernatural powers. Daimon is an ethics professor and exorcist, while Anna is a goth, Silicon Valley type with a fun haircut who murders criminals. The duo reunites to aid their demon-possessed mother, Victoria, who has been locked away in a psychiatric facility for two decades. What follows is part demon exorcising procedural, part family drama, 
and neither are properly executed. Though Daimon monologues early in episode 1 about the tired horror tropes he sees right through, Hellstrom is an uninspired take on all things demonic. The demons, who almost exclusively inhabit ordinary human bodies, do little beyond speak in unsettling voices and perform rudimentary feats of telekinesis. Characterizing forces of absolute evil is no easy task, but it takes too long for the demon's plan to become apparent, and the entities never serve as an engaging foil to the show's protagonists. Neither Daimon, Anna, or the rest of the show's do-gooders fare much better. Austin's take on the demon hunter is gratingly bland, Daimon meanders about performing exorcisms and video game fetch quests. He's joined by Vatican agent Gabriella, whose fish-out-of-water arc is far too predictable. Lemon Zana fares a bit better, if only because the writers give the character some personality, albeit a consistently unpleasant one. Regardless, neither the Hellstrom family or the show's other subjects come off as believable characters with lives or personalities that exist beyond the mission of each episode. We're brothers, you know, we're family. No matter how bad it gets, that doesn't change. The show follows brothers Sam and Dean Winchester, who travel across America in a black 1967 Chevy Impala investigating and combating paranormal events and other unexplained occurrences, many of them based on American urban legends and folklore as well as classic supernatural creatures such as vampires, werewolves, and ghosts. The duo travel around the U.S. in their 67 Impala, having been trained by their father after their mother was killed by a demonic force. Many of the supernatural forces they encounter are based on American urban legends and folklore and they even come face to face with Lucifer and God themselves. As they travel, Sam begins to develop psychic abilities and visions, and they meet good supernatural creatures who help them protect the world from falling into the hands of evil. 